Joining me is Professor Peter Collignon, who's an expert in epidemiology from the Australian National University, someone who during the pandemic did have a better handle on where it was going than anyone else I heard. Peter Collignon, thank you so much for joining me. This inquiry will not look into one of the most oppressive parts of the government's response to the pandemic, which is the brutal lockdown, especially in Victoria. Lockdowns are clearly too long, too harsh. Does that surprise you that this is not part of the agenda? Well, it did surprise me. I mean, I think it's reasonable to have an inquiry at looking what the federal government did and their responsibilities and how they may have done it better because we are likely, or there's always a possibility, that we could have this occurring again. It may not be a one-in-a-hundred-year event, but we need to learn. But equally, what most affected people were things like lockdowns, mask mandates, restrictions, uh, not being able to go outside for more than an hour, closing playgrounds, closing schools. And that's not going to be looked at because it's state governments made those decisions. So while this inquiry is important, it is only going to answer a very small part of the questions we need answered, uh, which is which restrictions helped us a lot and look at the social and economic consequences of those. Because if you look at Sweden, for instance, um, they didn't actually have lockdowns and severe restrictions or nowhere near as severe as us, but their cumulative excess debts is about the same as Australia. Now, admittedly, theirs occurred a bit earlier. But we need to learn from that because, again, if I compare New South Wales and Victoria, New South Wales was criticised for not going hard enough. But at the end of the day, there were higher death rates in Victoria from COVID per 100,000 people and a higher excess death in Victoria than New South Wales. So for all the harsh restrictions, that didn't give a better result in the medium to long term. And we need to learn from that because if this ever occurs again, we need to make sure what restrictions we put in place are cost effective from a health, economic, social point of view and not actually go, I think, to the elimination strategy that too many adopted too early, which was a Chinese policy. Because at the end of the day, um, while you want to decrease a spread until you get your population vaccinated, we were in that position um, by, I think, you know, we're able to get there with a lot less restrictions than what we had and end up with the same result, which is minimise the deaths, but also minimise the social and economic consequences as well. Yeah, I must point out uh, that you were, you're were you not wise after the event. We, I remember you being on the show saying much the same thing at the time. But this is the thing, you know, it's just so frustrating. When you went through the list of things like closing playgrounds, it was just insane. And it was insane at the time. We were saying it then because almost no one was catching this virus in the open air, uh, you know, stopping people from going on walks and things like that. It was plainly crazy. But while it seems obviously nuts, I haven't heard any government actually acknowledge that, which runs the risk, of course, that these things will be repeated, these pointless chest-beating exercises... Uh, have you seen any any awareness generally and admission that next time we can't go this route? Well, that's uh, what I worry about. I think a lot of people basically still think, oh, if we only go harder now, we could eliminate this virus. I mean, it's that's just impossible. We need to protect people. But this view that we can get black and white, we can have no virus or, you know, a lot of virus, the reality is it's all grey in the middle. And we could have achieved very good results, in my view, without some of the restrictions, particularly going outside. I mean, the reality is, yes, people can catch it outside, but they did it very, very infrequently. We should have been able to handle that. One of the biggest advantages Australia had was more open air, good climate, being able to go outside. Yet we threw away that advantage for the social welfare and mental benefit of our, our population because people wanted zero cases no matter what the cost. That, in my view, was a big mistake. We need to learn from that. We need to do it objectively. Um, I might be wrong, for instance, but I think all the available evidence is you could have had quite good control of this virus without some of the restrictions we had. Look, those lockdowns were crazy, and, of course, it was the children who paid the highest price. It's just terrible. We do need an inquiry into that aspect. But looking at the three experts chosen for the government's inquiry, they include Dr Catherine Bennett. Now, she was a big supporter of the lockdowns for a long time, uh, changed her... You know, became increasingly critical, particularly the Victorian ones after that. But she today, uh, talking to Sky News, Tom Connell, she didn't seem really fussed at all that she wasn't uh, going to be looking into uh, the issue of the lockdowns. And, in fact, uh, uh, 
sort of sidled into uh, going back to another topic altogether of much less interest here she is doesn't that need to be probed if we're talking about next time yeah well it wasn't up to us to set the terms of reference of this of course um states have actually um at varying stages of doing their own reviews so it's not necessarily appropriate to reproduce that or to uh, duplicate that work but it is important to consider how it all worked nationally and one of the areas that is very much on the agenda is for example you know communication and messaging that's the bug of the communications the lockdowns are the issue do you see anyone on that panel professor Collin, who's as skeptical at the time as as you were about these lockdowns saying they'd gone on for too long and they were too harsh well, I suspect if you're appointed to one of these inquiries, you're restricted to the terms of reference. I'm, I'm on different government uh, committees and essentially um, that restricts you in the short term because even if you do more, it probably won't be able to ever be published. I think the better argument is this inquiry has got reasonable people looking at questions that can be answered from the federal government's point of view, both now, what's happening now and what happened before. But it seems obvious to me we need another inquiry, I think independent of one, and maybe a royal commission, if that gives enough power to be able to, you know, make states and territories, you know, be honest with what they did and why they did it, that maybe is the way you go, is that you let this inquiry give up and, and give out the reports on what the federal government and, uh, could have done better, but have a completely separate one that looks at the issues that affected most of us most directly, lockdowns, restrictions, not being able to go to work, closing schools, that's what most people want to know. How much benefit do we get from that versus the cost? And did it work and what didn't work? Mass mask mandates, et cetera, et cetera. We need answers to those because these fundamental things will have be the same issues if some other virus appears in 5, 10, 20 years. We need to learn what we did well, what we didn't do well, and how we can do better in the future. I've got a better idea than you, and you're the professor, I'm not. Instead of having two inquiries, have the Royal Commission cut to the chase and go straight to that. Uh, I do think that we were on a half promise for that one before the election, and I'd like to see it now. But Professor Peter Collingham, like I, I repeat, uh, this is not wise after the event. You were saying many of these things at the time. A pity you're not uh, on this uh, inquiry. Thank you so much for your time. At least you're on this show. Thank you for having me.